I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with an old friend, Rand Valdemar, who has flown the daylights out of this thing. But I've got to start off with this, Rand, because you said you were going to do a demonstration here and you were going to turn the engine off. And I just have to ask you with a grin on my face, why anyone to turn off a perfectly good engine? Well, the engine burns fuel. <laughs> we don't burn very much. It uh, makes noise. It, make, it makes a lot of noise. Uh, <laughs> this one's not too noisy. It's a little, little Rotex 80 horse. This is the 80 in this here. This is okay. the 80. And, you've got these uh, big long wings right. and what some people think of as a small engine. It works okay though. Uh, we climb at 11 or 1200 feet a minute. So there you yeah. go. 80 horsepower is plenty yes. on the right airplane. Yeah. All right, so I was joking about the uh, engine off, but why would you even want to demonstrate that? And, and we're looking here, by the way, at the Pipistrelle Cenus. And this has been around for a while. You and yeah. I went flying in it for a while, and uh, it'll stay up there as long as the day is good with some thermal lift. That's Absolutely. really what it's all about, right? That, that's right. This so is a glider. This is a glider. Uh, it's a self launch glider. Uh, more descriptive is the, the term touring motor glider. Touring motor okay. glider, okay, and, that's uh, a good term. Yeah, touring because it. Uh, typically will fly with very low power because it's so efficient as a glider it doesn't need much power so you get good speed long distance and uh, very efficient flight well now you told me another story that I want to relate that to because there are times and places where a long glide and low fuel usage would be good now of course it's going to save your wallet some damage and it might be a nice thing to do anywhere but you had a trip recently with your wife that really brings that home. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, my wife ha had been hesitant to go on trips with me, and I bribed her with this Caribbean Air Rally uh, put on by Catherine Tobinas uh, and her Canadian group. So we had about half American and half Canadian pilots, and uh, we had a Citation jet. There were 34 aircraft altogether. It was a Citation, 34 aircraft, wow. 34 aircraft, Citation jet, uh, a bunch of uh, twins, uh, high-performance singles, uh, some, some of your standard Cessnas and Pipers. And there was uh, the Sport Cruiser came along with us, 100 horse, but I was the only one on 80 horsepower to, to take this 4,000-mile trip. <laughs> and I'm sure there was some doubting people among them going, I don't know this airplane. I've never heard of an engine with such a, um, an aircraft with such a tiny engine, especially to a Citation owner. I imagine they had a puzzled look on their face when you started. When we started. But and did that change? It changed very quickly. We, uh, <laughs> we started at Fort Lauderdale, and the first leg was the longest leg, and that was to Grand Turk. And, and how far was that? That was uh, right or just about 650 miles. 650 miles. Nautical miles. A lot miles. of water yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of water. And the, the way I bribed my wife, in addition to staying at four-star hotels on this trip, <laughs> we, we, uh, we flew high enough to glide to land no matter where we were. Is that right? Yeah. You were able to see that. Now, now yeah. that's because you can't do that in just every airplane. Correct. But we, this one has what kind uh, of glide on it? This is a 28 to 1 glide ratio. 28, okay. And uh, we, we flew at a, anywhere from 10 to 12,000 feet most of the trip. And, and that gave you a landing all the while. On land. Didn't always give me an airport, but it always gave right. me land. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you're not in the water anyway. Correct. The, now, only time we, the only time we were out of gliding distance was a departure one day where we had a ceiling of about 1,200 feet. Oh, uh, you just couldn't we had go to, any higher. We had to stay low for 20 miles. Okay, so back to, back to the flight that you had here with your wife and all the airplanes and the Citation jet and all the other guys consuming more fuel than you were consuming. Here you are in your 80 horsepower aircraft. How did that sort out for fuel usage and, and things like that? Well, and what did the other guys think of all that? Okay, the other guys uh, were a little skeptical when we took off. I'll bet. Uh, we were the about the fifth or sixth aircraft to take off because we were a little slower than most of them. Uh, but we were not the last or even close to the last to land at the first uh, first point because we didn't have to stop for fuel. Almost every other aircraft, except for the the, the twins and the uh, Citation, had to stop for fuel. So Is that we, right? we were at, at, at about what distance did uh, they typically at, at, do that? They they did that at Exuma. Okay. They made a fuel stop at Exuma and then continued on. But I, anybody who had to stop in Exuma, I was able to beat. So <laughs> Is that we, right? we were in the first. So half. all of a sudden, people are kind of going, "Hey, yeah. uh, this calculates different than I expected." Yeah, we were the first first half of the aircraft to arrive. That didn't it, happen on the rest of the trip, but we still we still managed a pretty good hundred knot average speed. Is so, that right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that's an average number now and that means you can cruise at what in this aircraft uh, with 80 horsepower again? Uh, if we put the short wing tips on, this thing cruises at a, a true 115 knots. Now that's not economy cruise, that's normal cruise, but that's three and a half gallons an hour in normal yeah, cruise. Yeah, so that's still yeah. not very much. Yeah. And again, thanks partly to this 80 horsepower engine. Right. And which we, I'm a big believer in. Well, even the other thing, Pipistrel makes a prop, and we do get a, a overhaul every 600 hours, but it's not expensive to overhaul, and that prop is just really, really efficient. And is it a feathering prop? It is a fully feathering prop. Ah, can, there you go. If we can see that, and that's that, not I don't just know. loose. <laughs> yeah. This is spring-loaded, and there's a knob right on the panel that we pull out. 
and the prop feathers, and it increases our glide by about five points. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Okay, so that's pretty significant. Yeah. So you were well prepared on this, but tell me a little bit more about your fuel burns on this trip that we just discussed. Okay, okay. we used 101 gallons, and the trip was right at, uh, I believe, 3,900 miles. Wow, okay. All right, so it turned out to be, I think, 38 miles to the gallon, and we were between normal cruise and economy cruise. Yeah, so think about burn. that, folks. Uh, 38 miles per gallon, that, that would be a good number in most automobiles, but most automobiles are going 60, 70, maybe 80 miles an hour at the most. Yeah. You're doing 115 knots if you went with the short wing tips, and we'll come back to that yeah. for a second too, but uh, if you do all of that, you're, you're doing much better than an automobile at significantly higher speeds yeah. and, and straight line which makes a difference. That's, that's exactly right, and that's, that's why uh, we, had, we had an article uh, a couple years ago. It, it called it a Prius with, ring, with wings. <laughs> Prius it, with and wings. We, and we, we agree to that, except that we're twice as fast. <laughs> they wish they could go that fast, yeah. but same kind of mileage, basically. Yes, so Okay, correct. I mentioned the wingtips. I want to touch on that. What do you mean you can take the wingtips off? We have a, uh, some pins and a spar pin that connects to the spar and the, the wing ends. Uh, the wingtips come off mainly because the American market, almost everybody has T-hangers. This 50-foot uh, wingspan, we just couldn't get it in. It's a 50-foot wingspan. What we're seeing yeah. here is 50-foot wingspan. This is a 50-foot, just under 50 feet. Most hangers won't take that. Okay. And, and if they are, they're expensive. Uh, the American market just wasn't buying very many cents. As soon as we, we made that option, it's about, uh, about 4,000 euros for that option. Okay. But it makes all the difference in the world. Every single cents we've sold in the U.S. Is that right? As They've all got that si now. Since uh, 2012 or 2011 when, when they introduced those, every single one has been a flex. Well, it kind of makes two airplanes out of it a little Correct. bit, doesn't it? Tell, me how it? tell me how it differs in operation with yeah. short versus long wingtips. Yeah, we, now we have a Virus SW, which everybody knows, and that's our, our normally registered experimental glider, and it's got a 35-foot wingspan. But after the Sinus, before we went to the Virus SW, we had the standard Virus, which had a 40-foot wingspan. Okay. And they were really building two different aircraft. Uh, a much easier and better solution was to build one aircraft that had both sets of wings, and that's what we've I done. I see. So that's they, where that kind of got exactly. born. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so and, and how long a time is it to pull those things off and put them back on? Uh, and taking them off takes 30 seconds, putting them on uh, about the same. It takes a little while to figure out exactly how to line it up so it goes in. Yeah, so it's Sometimes quite a snug fit in there, isn't it's it? It's very tight, uh, and you turn a hex bolt uh, in seven turns, and you're locked down, and they're not coming off. And in fact, having removable wingtips actually increases the, uh, the uh, V&E. New seats are very comfortable. They actually have a lumbar support and an adjustment for Beautiful. your lumbar support. I'm big uh, on that, so thank you for that. Because yeah, uh, I didn't mention that my first leg to Grand Turk was seven hours. Uh, and my wife and I flew that. We had a sip of coffee, about actually about a tablespoon of coffee was <laughs> yeah. our breakfast. So we, we both we, I, we all know why. We, so. <laughs> at the halfway point at Zuma, we made a made a decision. I feel good. You feel good. Okay, we'll make it. You, you yeah. had a, you had one rest stop. We, we had an option. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the baggage area is really nice with the new new seats. They're a hardback seat that supports the lumbar and they're velcroed in instead of having straps to back the seats uh, to get to the baggage compartment. So we just velcro to the bulkhead? They're, they're velcro to the bulkhead, you pull it off and you've got a nice large opening into the baggage area. Uh, it really precludes the, uh, some of the need to get the side access baggage door. Uh, okay, so which, which had been there but is now not there it's because of the new seats. Yeah, it's an oh, option. You can still have it. But you it's can still option. have it. Uh, okay. Now it doesn't, you know, when I look again over your shoulder, the camera seeing it too, there doesn't look like a lot of area back there, but you told me you carried quite a bit. I Tell mean, me. We had 85 pounds of baggage. 85 yeah. pounds of stuff, yes. so. Six, six bags. Small, but not real big bags. You won't take a big old uh, extra large suitcase in there, but small duffel bags, you can put 80, 80, 80 to 100 pounds of baggage back there, no problem. So that was you 60 pounds the for the wife, and uh, you had a toothbrush. Uh, no, my wife, <laughs> I call her the frugal frown. She's, Is that right? Oh, yeah. she's, she's She was the lean one, and you were the... <laughs> now that she's willing to travel with me in the aircraft, uh, there's there's no, nowhere we can't All go. All right, well, yeah. and it produces a smile yeah. like that, so it's a good thing to do. Uh, Rand, that's great. You've given us a lot of good information, but we don't cover everything on purpose. We want to send people to you. Tell us a website, and we'll put it up on the screen yeah. for folks where they can contact you and find out more stuff about the whole Fifth Astrol launch. Okay, you can find out all the dealers throughout the U.S. We've got now a bunch of dealers and promoters, uh, uh, just about 
dry, easy driving distance to, to get a demo flight. Great. And we have different aircraft. We even have a few, couple Tauruses in the U.S. now. A little, little harder to get a Taurus ride, but uh, the, the Virus SW and the Sinus are really the big sellers here. Uh, the website is uh, www.pipistrel-usa.com. It's P-I-P-I-I-S-T-R-E-L-USA.com. Okay, very good, Rand. Thank you for that. You can find more about Pipistrelle airplanes and lots of other aircraft in the affordable aviation range on bydanjohnson.com.